Well, welcome to worship. Good afternoon. Uh, we welcome uh, everybody who's here in person with us and also those that are online watching. Uh, we're glad to be back having some in-person worship services. There's an excitement in the air, and so uh, we're glad to be here with you, all of you today. We do appreciate everyone who helped us uh, sort of get to this point of being here today, so especially our our staff, our council, members of our COVID-19 advisory board, our ushers, and so many more. Uh, so just a few reminders. Again, uh, we, we're trying to employ social distancing, so we appreciate you thinking about that. Uh, we appreciate everybody wearing their masks. Uh, you'll notice at the points where we were talking up front, Pastor Pat and I and uh, Matthew and Bailey singing, that we are gonna take our mask off because I don't know if you've ever heard Darth Vader sing or lead worship, but that's what it would sound like if we had our mask on. So we're going to remove it just long enough to do our leadership parts, and then we'll put it back on. So thank you for doing that. Uh, we remember hygiene is important, so washing our hands and using hand sanitizer. Our offering plates are at the rear door, so you can uh, hit that before you leave. Um, so we have given you your prepackaged communion elements, and, uh, and this thing uh, is really cool, but it, it may be a little difficult to open, so I wanted to kind of walk you through it. So if you look at the tabs, there's two different pull tabs. There's like a clear plastic cellophane tool uh, pull tab. If you pull that, that will expose the wafer. And then if you pull the little bit denser, thicker uh, foil tab, that is what uh, gets you to, to the grape juice. So just remember when, when we get to communion time and I ask you to pull that first uh, wrapper to get to the wafer, don't pull the second and then spill grape juice all over you and all that kind of stuff. Um, we can make it right, but just you don't want that, right? So, uh, so just look at those two different pull tabs and, and that'll be helpful to you when it comes to communion. Um, we do have trash can at the back door, so you can throw those away uh, as you're leaving today. Um, we will dismiss by group of chairs, so uh, the ushers will come back up and dismiss folks so that we can make sure that we distance on the way out. And again, we know that this is an exciting time and people want to visit and those types of different things. We just ask that you make it out of the building. You can visit in the parking lot and do some of those things once we kind of get out into the open air. So we appreciate you thinking about that. Um, I don't think there's any other announcements. I believe it is time to begin worship with our invocation. Would you please rise? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, imploring Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and penitent sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have offended you and for which I justly deserve your punishment. But I am sorry for them and repent of them and pray for your boundless mercy for the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ. Be gracious and merciful to me a poor sinful being. Forgive my sins. Give me your Holy Spirit for the amendment of my sinful life and bring me to life everlasting. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you and for His sake God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, He gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rest and strength of the night just passed, and we ask you to renew us for a life of faithful service lived in you. Give us grace in Christ not to become weary in service for your name's sake. Keep us from weariness and apathy that would dull our labor. Help us take the yoke of Christ cheerfully because he makes the burden lighter. Remember today, we pray, the sick, those who live in fear, those who are touched by grief, violence, or abuse, the aged, the infirm, the shut-ins, the mentally ill, the unemployed, the underemployed, and our brothers and sisters who suffer persecution or martyrdom for the faith. 
Help us to remember that to help them is a privilege and a trust from you. Give us compassion to share with the least of our Lord's sisters and brothers as we support them with our prayers and gifts. Empower us to share with those whose lives we touch your peace, which passes all understanding, keeping our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. St. Luke tells us the Pentecost story in the second chapter of Acts this way. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and the tongue rested upon each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of them heard speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are these not who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Pythagorean, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, all in our own languages. And we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known unto you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power and wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man, handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. What then should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those welcomed his message and were baptized and about that day were added 3,000 people. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, breaking the bread and saying the prayers. The story of Pentecost from the, from the book of Acts. Grace and peace to you all from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ. Well, just this past Sunday, we celebrated the birthday of the church, Pentecost. And this is our first time back together for in-person worship, to gather as Christ's people, as the community of believers, and to reflect on Pentecost. I absolutely am excited that this is the text. But before I get too much more to the sermon, I... Can you believe the last time that we were all together in one place was Sunday, March 15th? Y'all remember when that was? That was smack dab in the middle of Lent. Not to mention our last Wednesday Eucharist service was a few days before our March 11th. It, it does my heart good to see y'all. And I don't know about you, but it seems like the whole world has changed since March 15th. But there are some things that haven't changed. 
Christmas is still the day of Jesus' birth, and Easter is still the day of Jesus' resurrection, and Pentecost, 50 days after Easter, is still the birthday of the church. So what's all this Pentecost business about? Well, we always get out the red pyramids on Pentecost, and that's because the color red is the color for fire, the fire and the glow of the Holy Spirit. Because on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit arrived and set those first Christians on fire with commitment for the gospel. And the Holy Spirit took these disparate people with all these different languages, don't let that be lost on you, and they're welded together in the gospel of Jesus Christ into community. If you go back, just pick up the words, all the togetherness and the groupiness and the community that, that Luke talks about in the second chapter of Acts. Words like this, the disciples and others in Jerusalem were all together in one place and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And then one gift, one miracle, the Spirit came among the disciples and they began speaking in different languages. Now understand, the Jews that were on the street that day, they weren't hearing the typical sounds of the street of Jerusalem, which was either Hebrew or Aramaic. But there were Jews from all over Jerusalem and indeed all over the world who had come for the festival of Shavuot, which commemorates the first fruits of harvest and the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai. We call that day Pentecost for us. But each one heard the language of back home, kind of like that accent you hear. You know when you're somewhere else and somebody from the south speaks up and your ear tickles because you hear that accent or that, or that language that you know? Well, understand that the disciples were able to communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ. Peter shared the gospel, as I said, as we, Jason and I were talking about Pentecost Day, 3,000 people came to believe. That's better than I ever did preaching. And what happens is the Spirit brings these disparate people, Medes and Parthians and Elamites, and the list goes on, and gathers them and forms them into a community. Well, what did they do? Well, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayers. And all who believed had things in common, and day by day they attended the temple together and broke bread in their homes and partook of food with glad and generous hearts. Here's what I overhear in this that the gift of the Spirit transformed them into a community of people who were together. In short, they followed the Pentecost path. You see, the, the Spirit's primary work is the bestowal of shared life in the community. And it's just not an ax. Paul talks about it in 1 Corinthians where he emphasizes that the Spirit brings Christians together as one body. Or in Philippians, as the Spirit supplies fellowship and keeps the body, in, the list goes on and on. Because the Spirit's work on people and described in Acts as bringing together people into a community, into a body, whether we're here today or worshiping virtually. It's kind of like, it's interesting. You know, my mom's a retired nurse, and one of the cool things I did when I was a kid was I would get to go to what hospital she was working at occasionally, and sometimes she'd let me go down to the lab. Now, I don't have the math ability to work in the lab, but I sort of thought it was cool, and one of the things that I always remember in the lab was the centrifuge that takes things and spins them around and flings them apart. But understand, the Spirit's not like that centrifuge that so fascinated me when I was a little boy. Rather, it's like a magnet that brings people and particles and things together. So, so what's the take, take home with all this Pentecost business? Well, everything I've heard in all three congregations, yes, at St. Stephen's, yes, and at Friendship Taylorsville, and at Good Shepherd Goldsboro, over 30 years, here's what people always say. When things are moving along swimmingly in the church, right, when things are going, you know what people always say? Well, pastor, that's our congregation, right? And if there's a hiccup or a speed bump, then people will always say to me of their fellow congregant, well, you know, pastor, old so-and-so is your member. 
I thought they were our member. And if you think that's, well, it's kind of like my family, the Riddle family. It's like one of my first cousins saying to me in the midst of one of our frequent, our riddle tips is the best way to put that, when one of them's talking about our, our cantankerous uncle, they would say, now, you know, Patrick, your uncle. <laughs> I thought it was your uncle, too. Here's the point. When the spirit of Pentecost lights upon us, we don't view our brothers and sisters as a they. You see, we here at St. Stephen's, we're an us. We're a community of believers brought together in the love of Jesus Christ with the Spirit of God and bestowed the most wonderful and holy opportunity to share the love of Christ. And that's just not here, although that's central here. It's also true in our families. Now, I don't know about your family, but in families, occasionally some competition or conflict can arise, at least in other people's families, right? But uh, there's a little guy's letter that read, Dear God, I know that you love everybody, but you don't know my sister very well. <laughs> Signed, Jack. You see, there can be pulling apart. But in the spirit, this pulling apart transformed into a gracious and voluntary mutual helpfulness and support and encouragement and generosity. It's, it's as simple as not resisting that feeling to share a kind thought or word. And conversely, not being so quick to state one's own wants or complaints. Or let me make this real easy. It's agreeing to go to Lizard's Thicket even when you really want to go to San Jose. Make sense? And you can insert restaurant of your choice. You see, it's not giving in to fuss about others in consideration or wanting my way or I'm always right. Because, see, you and I have been called by the Spirit, by that great magnet, onto the Pentecost path. That Spirit who always draws us together, and in one way or another, that Spirit makes us to be that force and calls us to be that force to bring people together in love in the gospel and in a world, honest to Pete, which just seems to be coming apart by the hinges. You see, understand that, that as the Spirit brings us together, things may not always be like they once were, but in the Spirit we can replace ill will with goodwill and antagonism with cooperation. And in homes and in institutions and in society where harsh words before have been spoken. It's hard sometimes for people who have been alienated to let the sounds die and move toward one another. Or where there have been reject relationships, where there's been betrayal or rejection. It's hard to let bitterness recede. And yet Jesus says these words, y'all, and I want you to put them in your heart and treasure them and trust them and believe them and live them and know them. Jesus says, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. What that means is, as we allow the magnet of the cross to draw us toward it, what we're going to do is find ourselves standing side by side and shoulder to shoulder with some people who you might have not anticipated standing that close to. I know that's not the most appropriate illustration in social distancing, but I think you kind of know what I'm talking about. Because understand, you see, the Spirit is loose among us. And as we walk that Pentecost path, we discover how much more joy there is in unity than disunity, and how much more in encouragement and support and in fellowship than in isolation, and how much more security there is in cooperation rather than conflict. We grow to understand what the writer of Psalm 133 said when they said, how wonderful and pleasant it is for God's people to live together in harmony. That's why I say to you, it just does my heart so good to see y'all this day. Pentecost blessings, my fellow path followers, as the Spirit draws us together to send us out to share the gospel. Amen.
Let us now profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He has seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Gracious Spirit, dwell with me, my much gracious Spirit. Help me now thy grace to see, I would be like thee. And with words that help and heal, thy life would mine reveal. And with actions bold and meek, for Christ my Savior speak. Please rise and let us pray together. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, breath of life and fire of love, with the mighty wind you brought creation into being, and by a pillar of fire you led your people into freedom. We praise you for the gift of your Son, who poured out your Spirit on his disciples of every race and nation. 
The night which he has betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and the sending of the holy and life-giving spirit, we await his coming again to renew the face of the earth. Send now your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this meal. Anoint us with your gifts of faith, hope, and love, that with thankful hearts we may be witnesses to your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. You may be seated. If you would find your prepackaged communion elements. And if you would unwrap the top cellophane wrapper and get your wafer. Everybody figured it out yet? Once you have it, the body of Christ given for you. And now if you would unwrap your grape juice. And when you have the blood of Christ shed for you. Now you may rise. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine, grant you the gifts of faith and hope. And Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. Thanks be to God.